verse 22, First Kings, chapter 20. And we'll start at verse 22. Verse 22. Then the prophet came near to the king of Israel and said to him, Come, strengthen yourself and consider well what you have to do. For in the spring the king of Syria will come up against you. And the servants of the king of Syria said to him, The gods are the gods of the hills. And so they were stronger than we, but let us fight them in the plain. And surely we will be stronger than they. And do this, remove the kings each from his post and put commanders in their places and muster an army like an army that you have lost, horse for horse and chariot for chariot. Then we will fight against them in the plains and surely we shall be stronger than they. And he listened to the voice and did so. And the spring Benadad mustered the Syrians and went up to Aphlech to fight against Israel. And the people of Israel were mustered and were provisioned and went against them. The people of Israel encamped before them like two little flocks of goats, but the Syrians filled the country. And the man of God came near and said to the king of Israel, Thus said the Lord, because the Syrians have said, The Lord is the God of the hills, but is not the God of the valleys. Therefore will I give all this multitude in your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord and they encamped opposite one another seven days then on the seventh day the battle was joined and the people of Israel struck down of the Syrians 100,000 foot soldiers in one day I want to teach from the lesson lessons in the valley lessons in the valley let me pray father we're grateful today for your presence in this place. Grateful that you have brought your people in to hear a word from you. Now strengthen me for this assignment that I may bring glory to your name. May I be a tool in your hand today that will snatch somebody out of the fire. That will call somebody who who is not in their set place yet to be in their set place. And may those who are already in their set place be strengthened by the word today. You are the God of the valleys. You are the God of the mountains. And thank you for being our God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. You may have your seats. Your lessons in the valley. Awesome God that we serve. When you think about what was going on back then, it's similar to what's going on now, that these are treacherous times for the people of Israel. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Before I get going, I did not release the kids. I just thought about that. Amen. I want to release the kids, all kids, to Children's Church. All kids, to Children's Church. Amen. I'm excited about the lessons. Bless the Lord. Somebody say, bless the Lord. All right. Again, I want to teach from the subject, lessons in the valley. Somebody say, lessons Lessons. in the valley. So in these lessons, in this story, we see this was a treacherous time for the people of Israel. And the wicked king Ahab, because Israel had their own king, but Ahab, Ahab was wicked, and he was guilty of getting the people of Israel to worship a Canaanite god called Baal instead of Jehovah. It is very similar to what I see going on in our nation. We're worshiping the wrong god, and, and judgment, believe it or not, is coming, is headed our way if we don't change. But what I love about God in this story is that he is a god of mercy. He still loved his people in spite of what they were doing. He still had a plan to save them. And I thank God. I don't know about you, but I thank God for his everlasting love. That at times we can miss the mark. We can get stuck in our mess, but he does not turn us away because we missed the mark. He loves, here we go, the hell out of us. The things that we're doing that does not please him. He said, I'm going to love you enough to show you that you're greater than what you're doing. You're greater than what you're going through. You're greater than the valley that you may think you're in right now. But I'm going to use that to get you where you need to be. 
Israel was in this battle with Syria, with God's help, Ahab and the people of Israel defeated them and claimed victory over them. But what I learned about this story is this, in spite of their defeat, Ahab is then notified that the Syrians was going to attack them again. And if, let's look back at verse 22 because I want us to see this because they're getting ready to be attacked again. It says this, the prophet came near to the king of Israel and said to him, come and do what? Strengthen yourself and consider well what you have to do for in the spring, the king of Syria will come up against you. Listen, there are times when we find ourselves right back in the fight even after we've had the victory. Mm. Right back to spending money you don't have. Right back to fornication and intoxication. Right back to speaking death and not life over yourself. The enemy has a plan. He has a clever tactic. The enemy has this tactic. <clears throat> he, will keep you fight. he will keep fighting you and what you already have victory over. Oh, let me say that again. He will keep fighting you and what you already have victory over. You've won against that thing, but he'll keep fighting against you. Even though you got victory, he won't stop coming because what he wants you to do is to go back and begin to do that all over again. But when the Lord enables us to win a victory against the devil, you can count on him coming back against us again to fight on another day. The devil won't stop. And this is what I don't understand about believers is your enemy is not going to stop trying to kill you. And I don't know why we quit and give him opportunity to kill us. God's not moving like we want him to do, and we want to quit and run back out in, into the world. There's nothing in the world that's going to help you win this battle. You need God to help you win this battle. The devil says, I want to see you defeated no matter what. I don't want to even have you to have a chance that you're going to win. And if he can't win in one area of your life, he'll try you in another area of your life. He will attack you. You're doing good over here. He will come over on this side to attack you. To get you to slide back. Yeah, you've been doing good. You put away porn, but now he's coming for your peace. Oh, you better hear me now. You put away, like I said earlier, pointless spending. You're spending money you don't have, but now he's coming for your patience because you can't wait for God to get you in the right place. You're doing good now. You put away playing church, but now he's coming for your purpose. He said, I'm not just coming to church to do church. I'm coming now to be changed. I'm coming to be different. I'm coming to be who God called me to be. But the enemy does not care. He wants you to stay right where you are. But just like the Syrians were defeated and they walked in victory, you and I are going to walk in victory too. Shout in Jesus, I always win. When you know that, that you always win in him, then there's no need to ever get out of him. Because at times, I just don't understand what's going on. Uh, uh, understanding is not required. Trust is. No, no. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your in all your ways. And he will do what? Sometimes we say to God, if only I understood what you were doing, then I can follow you more closely. <clears throat> but I'm here to tell you, you don't have to know. You just got to trust. So three lessons, three lessons, three, three lessons I want us to consider. Number one, it's Satan's assumption. Because when you're in a battle now, Satan's going to come at you. He's going to assume something about you. He's going to assume something about you. Verse 23, 1 Kings 20, 23, there is an assumption going on here. There, there, <laughs> there's an there is an assumption going on here. Is that better for, 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 my, for my note takers? Amen. I know they, they want to take notes. Amen. Amen. So that means this is good. On Wednesday, we'll talk about the notes y'all took. Okay, let's do that. All right, let's do that. So number one, Satan's assumption. Let's go to 1 Kings 20, and let's look at verse 23. Let's look at this now. Verse 23 says, And the servants of the king of Syria said to him, Their gods are gods of the hills, and so they were stronger than we. But let us fight against them in the plain, and surely we shall be stronger than they. So what's going on here? This, uh, what they're doing is they're thinking the only reason why we lost the battle is we fought because we fought them on high ground. That's a dangerous assumption of thinking that God can't deliver you in the valley. See, they lost the first battle and then they thought if we could just get them in the valley, we'll have a better chance at defeating them. And that's the same gamble that the devil takes today with us. He said, I'm going to wait to really attack them at their low points. I'm going to bother them up here, but I can't win up here. But when they get in a low point of their lives, I'm coming to fight them at a low point. 
Because he knows spiritually when we're on top, you can't mess with us when we're on top. When we're on the mountaintop, you can't mess with us. Come on, we got a shout in our soul and a thank you, Jesus, in our heart. You can't mess with us there now because it's hard for the devil to be an on fire Christian. I think that's why Nehemiah said, The joy of the Lord is my strength. It is something about having the joy of the Lord that the enemy knows that he cannot beat you then. This is a very similar situation that Paul and Silas had. Following the assignment, doing what God told them to do, they get beaten and thrown into prison. And the Bible says they had a praise and a prayer. You better hear me right now. They had something that, 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 that they, the devil couldn't take away from them. They thought, he thought if I can attack them now, I'll take something. But they says I got a prayer and a praise. They say, I'm ready for the devil. I win. In Jesus' name. See, they had a song when that sucker came. And that's what you need in those trying times. You know what? I do have a song I can sing while I'm speaking scripture. I got a song that goes with the word of God. Over in Acts 16, 24, it says, at midnight this happened. At midnight. In other words, at the darkest times in Acts 16, 25. At the darkest times, the enemy will come to attack. But you got to have a prayer and a praise for the darkest moments that you'll ever face. So they prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly, I'm going to stop right there. See, if you can get your praise and your prayer right, suddenly it's going to break out in your life. All you got to do is have that right now. And uh, suddenly it's going to break out in your life. Question to you today, if the devil squeezes you and all he gets out of you is a prayer and a praise, he'll stop squeezing you. He'll try to discourage you in the valley, but, but if you can give him a shout on the praise, he'll leave you alone. And I want to remind you this morning that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you respond. So yeah, he came, but, 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 but look at what I gave him when he came my way. I'm not worried about it because I know the God that I serve, he's got me. Tell somebody, God got this. No, no, God got it. God got it because oftentimes what the enemy wants us to do is focus only on the problem. And then focus on how long you've been waiting. And then now if you do that, you can't even see God doing good for you. It's hard to find good when all you're looking at is what's not working in your life. But if you think about it this morning, what's working good for you right now? You woke up this morning. You better hear me right now. Clothe in your right mind. You dress yourself this morning. You don't know what I'm talking about until you're at a place where you can't dress yourself. You get stuck with somebody that had to clean you up. That's, a not, that's not a good place to be in. And you walked in here this morning. You better talk to me this morning. See, if I can just look at what's working in my life, I can give God praise. Even though some things are not working, I can still focus on what is and give God a praise. Amen. And this is the mindset we got to have because often what I talk to the members here is how long, Pastor, I got to keep waiting. When is this going to happen? When is the word going to be what you are proclaiming? I'm speaking the word. I'm, I'm saying my faith confession, but it looks like nothing is happening. I'm speaking right. It seems like my marriage is getting worse. I, I, I'm doing right. It seems like I want the lust is turned up. Where are my single folks at? That thing just turned up on you. And then you're trying to do right, but stuff is turned up on you. You, you, you want to go, you go right, but stuff on the left keeps pulling you back. How long past am I going to be in this fight? I don't know. But what I do know is, if you stay in the fight, you're going to win. I know that. That if you don't give up, you're going to win. So don't quit. So don't quit. Don't quit. Keep battling. Don't quit. Keep fighting. Don't quit. Keep your hands up. Don't drop your hands down. Keep the shield of faith up. Keep the word in your hand. Don't quit. Keep fighting. I guarantee you're going to win. And this is why I often tell people in the church, I'm oh, just having a tough time. Ah, Philippians 4, I go there. Philippians 4, that's one of the verses I always seem to give members here. Philippians 4, and look at verses 6 through 8. This is one that you need to pipe down, put down inside of your bosom and keep it with you all the times. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse 6 through 8. Philippians 4, 6 through 8. Look at what it says in verse 6 through 8. You, you got to turn faster. You got to turn faster. <laughs> it says this now. Don't worry about what? Anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I got so much to thank God for. Then, say then. then. He said, I thank God. He says, then I will experience God's peace. 
which exceeds anything we can understand, his peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And look at verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. He said, don't worry, pray, and then fix your mind on what's working, what's good, and what's right. Not fix your mind on what's not working good and not working right. Fix your mind on what is working right. Because here's the thing, if the devil can get you to focus on his tactics, we will miss the triumphs that we have with God. You, you miss how you win. You miss, it's so much working right for you, but oftentimes we're looking at what's not working right. And we're in this valley, so it seems. And God says, not really. You're in the valley because of your perspective, not because of my plan. It's how you perceive where you are that makes you think you're in the valley. But if I can show you where you really are, you realize that you are on the mountaintop and you don't even know it. Woo! And all the enemy wants to do is to use discouragement on you. Don't take the bait. Just wait on the Lord and watch him work. Tell your neighbor, my name is Victory. Yeah, yeah. No, you got to be able to claim that about yourself. Come on now. Yo, that's not yo come on now. Yo, your middle name ought to be Victory. Well, why middle name? Because God is in the middle of everything I'm doing. He gets in the middle and says, what, what's going on with you, son? I'm going to get in the middle and I'm going to stop that stuff. On one end, I'm going to hold the enemy back. On the other end, I'm going to push you up higher. Amen. Glory to God. Tell somebody again, my name, my name is, victory. is victory. Now, let's get to point number two. Point number two is the Savior's announcement. Because Satan always assumes something, but the Savior's announcement, he will announce something over your life. In the midst of what you think you're going through, he will announce something over your life. The Savior's announcement. When I'm in my valley, I'm always, I, I'm looking for God to say something. God, I thank you, Lord. You, uh, I, you know what? I know I'm getting ready to go somewhere. Because I won't be going through this much hell if I wasn't going somewhere. I know God's getting ready to do something, so I'm excited. God, speak. Look at verse 28. Look at verse 28 in 1 Kings 20, 28. It says this now, and the man of God, let me say it today, and the man of God came near and said to the king of Israel, thus says the Lord. Oh, I love this. Because the serious Syrians have said, the Lord is the God of the hills, but he is not a God of the valleys. Therefore will I give all the great multitude into your hand, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Oh, God, I have you in a place where it looks like you're losing. Where the enemy get excited because he think he got something on you. He said, but I'm getting ready to show that devil that I'm the God of the valley as well. Yeah, God's going to show us how to rejoice in valleys. We don't know how to do that just yet, but he's getting ready to show us how to rejoice in the valley. Now, he's not the little in the valley for, for nothing. He, he, he's there to let us know I'm in this with you. So the Syrians assume now that they lost because everything was going right for Israel. That they were on a hill fighting and they assumed that we lost because of our position. They didn't know that God was the cause of Israel's victory. And if you stay with God, he's going to assure you of victory as well. Somebody shout, I always win. I always win. He's going to assure you now that you always win. And please get this statement. I don't know if they put it in the notes or not, but get this statement on the inside of you. God is bigger than your valley. I left it in the notes. I don't know if they got it, but I said God is bigger than your valley. Wherever you think you are, God is bigger than your valley. He is bigger than what's not working in your life. He is bigger than that. So don't look at that. Look, look at the God that's bigger than that. And you know, I know it's easy to serve God on the mountaintop. It's easy to serve God when everything is going well. But can you serve him when God ain't talking to you? Can you serve him when I've just been sitting waiting on God? Seems like nothing is happening in my life. I'm in this valley. I'm in a place stuck. And I'm stuck because I went where he told me to go and I still got stuck. Who said that there won't be problems obeying God? 
That's not in scripture. In scripture, you see, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. So I may go through some stuff, but I got a guarantee from God that he is going to deliver me. You've got to know that about God because no matter where you where you're on your walk, all of us going to go through valleys. But he's still God. If you ever enter a valley of physical pain, he's still God. Ooh, I if you ever enter a valley of just spiritual discouragement, he is still God. If you enter a valley of sorrow, somebody I love has transitioned on, he is still God. Regardless of the valley that you're forced to enter, you're going to find out he is still God all by himself. And now if we can go to him, he solves my sorrow. He solves my physical pain. He solves my spiritual indifference because he has all of the answers to everything that I need. My plan, my place, my purpose is inside of God. I tell believers here all the time, pastor, I'm trying to find my purpose. I say, forget you. Find God and he'll give you your purpose. Stop trying to find yourself and find him. When you find him, he's going to show you who you really are. We're trying to find us and God at the same time. God says, no, I'm too jealous for you to look for both of us. Look for me and then I'll show you you. Ooh, you better hear me this. Are, are y'all listening to me? Because sometimes we get so stuck trying to find out, well, what am I supposed to be doing? I know what you're supposed to be doing, giving God praise. I know what you're supposed to be doing, being the salt of the earth. Y'all better talk to me, light of the world, but we're not even doing that yet. We want to find out something else. We're supposed to win souls. We're supposed to tell others about Jesus. And when is the last time you witnessed to anybody and then you're asking God, what is my purpose? He said a witness. Yeah, yeah, you're not even witnessing. You, you trying to find out how close I can get to seeing what I'm sinning. When it should be God, I want to get as far away from that thing like a cockroach flying around my head. Oh, y'all better hear me right now. That's how we ought to do sin. Like a, if a cockroach flying here right now, everybody moving. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to sit still. I just want to see how close he's going to get to me. <laughs> no, you're not doing that. Boy, you got the duck on and everything. We, I, I would think the Holy Ghost broke out in here. People would run out here and get out of the way so fast. And all I'm saying to us is let's not get so close to sin to see if we still got it. You ain't got it. You're going to fail. Pastor, you're speaking death over us? No, I'm speaking the truth over you. You better not get around that stuff. You're going to fall every time. Amen. So I tell you about me. That's why I, take that. That's why I know God's sick song, get rid of all your old CDs. Because, because I would go back to that in, time, in tough times. We go back to what's familiar to us in tough times. So if I got a whole lot of CDs with a whole lot of foolishness on, I'm going to go with that. Because that's what I used to do back in the day. So he said, get rid of all your old stuff. We don't want to have you have none. Get up all your biggie. You know, he, he, he hollered out his name first, get rid of biggie smalls. I said, God, dog. That was my man right there. <laughs> oh, y'all not, see, hey man, see, we get in church sometimes, we put a face on. I was one more chance. <laughs> so get rid of everything, all the stuff you got. I had to get rid of all my stuff. I'm going through all my stuff, getting rid of all my stuff. You know, you, and stuff you really like, it just jump out to you. You grab a seat and look at it, boy, I'm like, man, this is one of the Tupac good ones here. Man. Hail Mary, come quick, see what do we have here now? I said, God, I got to get rid of that. I'm put, I'm, I'm put it back in there. La, da, 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 da. Yeah. Because I did want to get rid of it. And sometimes God will have you in a place where you'll grab something that you really love and you don't want to let it go because you're thinking I can still do God and that at the same time, but you cannot do that in God at the same time. You might as well go ahead on and say, I'm, 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 I'm all on you, God. If I win this thing, it's going to be because I said and did what you told me to do. Amen? If I come out on time, and I'm going to do good if, if I ain't so cold. I don't know, but I'm just trying to feel cold up in here. First Corinthians 15, I was doing pretty good. It just hit me while I was standing here. I, said, I was holding this microphone. I said, ooh, my fingernails are cold. First Corinthians 15. <laughs> Go to First Corinthians 15 because the Bible 
is filled with promises that teach us that if we stay with God, we win. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. 15, 57. It says, but thanks be to God. See, everything starts with that. We can stop right there. And we can put anything behind our comma that we want to. But thanks be to God for my children. Thanks be to God for my job. Oh, you better talk to me now. Thanks be unto God that I didn't kill myself when the enemy gave me the thought to kill myself. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory, making us conquerors through our Lord Jesus Christ. Conquer us through Jesus Christ, not conquer us on our own. Not conquer us through old wives' tales. Not conquer us through what grandma and them told us back in the day that don't that ain't got nothing to do with the word. Yeah. They swept your foot, spit on the broom, so don't no, that's that's not wisdom. Amen. Amen. Don't set your purse on the floor, you're gonna be broke. All, all, all this stuff that they told us back in the day that we sometimes we still carry along with us. We still crossing our black cats. I'm like, well, what about the striped cats and, and the white and the gray cats? <laughs> Never lose sight that God is in every trial you face. Never lose sight of that. That in every trial, every test we face, God is in there with us. He's in there with us. No matter what, he's in there with us. So funny, so funny, Demetrius, I remember why we had a disagreement. And I'm like, okay, if God is in you, and he is, and he's in me, and he is, you need to listen to me. <laughs> For us, victory begins... When we come to understand that God is for us and not against us. Amen. Amen. The time is coming. Y'all better hear me. The time is coming when it's going to be a lot more men in here. When I make a statement like that, they're going to say, Amen. <laughs> it's coming. It, it, it's coming. I, I, I'm seeing that thing in the spirit, Ryan. That it, and there's going to be a strong baritone, Amen. Man, when everything, when everything, when everything around us says that we should be discouraged, because sometimes in your life you can look around at everything and like, man, okay, I know Pastor said I, I can just praise him for what's working, but man, it's so much. I, I do hear you, Pastor, but it's so much that's not working. And I, I am, I'm, I'm really, I'm working on trying to look at what's working, but man, it's, it's, it is so much that's not working, and it's trying to pull my attention on what's not working. It's okay to be real, right? Because we get to that place, we say, Pastor, I don't, I don't mind praising God when things are going well. But, man, I have so much stuff that I, that's in question that I'm like, man, what, what, what am I to do? Because all this stuff is happening in my life that I don't agree with. But, but, but you got to remember now, your name is Victory. I know that now, that your name is, 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 is already Victory. So here's the thing. You're not trying to win. You've already won. So now if I can get that in you that I'm not trying to win this battle. I've already won it. How could I already won it, Pastor? Because God begins with the end and then goes to the beginning. So what did God do for us? He says, okay, I'm going to go to the end of your life and I see everything you're going to encounter. So I'm going to put something at every place Every challenge, I'm going to put something there. So if you stay with me, you'll find the answer to every challenge because before you face the challenge, I put the answer there. The answer is already there. And so when we go to God asking for help, he's, he's asking us to humble ourselves, not so he can do it because it's already done. The humbling in ourselves is so that we can see what's already taken care of. And then if I can see that, then my praise is completely different. I, I, I don't have to wait for him to do something good for me to praise him. I, I, I don't because 
I know it's already done, and I just need to walk in those areas. That's why connections are so important with God. You think you met people just to meet them, but you met them at the right time. You came to the right church at the right time. Why? Because there's purpose in the place that you came. And sometimes we don't see it, or we get to a place, and it feels kind of sort of good, and we say, yeah, I think God is speaking to me there, but then we still go look at elsewhere until we come back and say, no, this is where God wants me at. Now, in the place is where things happen. In the place where God wants us is where the connection takes place. So in the valid times that I'm going through, I need to look for my connection pieces and my connection points. When I asked God for something in prayer and he said, give me one thing you faithfully, I had nothing. So when I gave him my prayer time with the latest, then he says, okay, you gave me prayer time. I'm going to give you what's next. You gave me something of value to you and I'm going to give you something of purpose for you. And when I began to do that, God began to show me everything else that needed to happen in my life. Everything began to break loose inside of my life. I was trying to find out what I was supposed to be doing. And God says, no, find me first. When I found God, yeah, I became pastor later, but before I became pastor, I became uh, one of the best photographers in the world finding God. I was sought after by some of everybody that wanted me to do their weddings, their family portraits, the, the graduation photographs. We, we were flying everywhere first later now. On them, because they, if, you, if you want us to do it, and then when, if, if you stand at the best hotels, I'm your photographer. Where am I staying at? Yeah, you're not going to put me at the Holiday Inn. In my contract, I, say, I stay where you stay. So if you sign it, how you living? It's how I'm living. If you got S car, I want S car. If you want me to come do it. When you know your value, you get what you want when you know your value. It is that when we don't know our value, that we'll accept anything to come our way. That was for some ladies in the house right there. When you, when you know your value, you don't have to worry about it. Just stay with your value. Now, come, come on, I'm, I'm, let me help you right now. If you stay with your value, we will come up. Mm -mm. No, no. The brothers will come up if they really want you. I ain't talking about the toys out there. They, they do want toys, but I ain't talking about the toys. If you're a toy girl, sorry. Don't do that. I ain't going to go into detail. Don't even worry about it. You know, ask me out the church what did I mean, and I'll tell you what I meant by that. Amen. But, okay, thank you. Thank you. And so for us, I want us to understand that God is with us in all of the things that we go through. Go to Romans 8, look at verse 37. He is with us in all of it, and we win. That's the name of the game. We win. Okay, how we do it? We, we, we win. Look at verse 37, Romans 8, 37. It says this, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors and gain an overwhelming victory through him who loved us so much that he died for us. Amen. That he what? He died for us. He died for us. I write this down. Write this down. I hope we got it in the back. Spiritual victory is simple faith in the God who never lost a battle. Spiritual victory is simple faith in the God who has never lost a battle. That's spiritual victory because it's not in my strength. It's in the God who has never lost a, a battle. He wins every time. Every fight he starts, every fight that comes up against him, God wins every time. And so regardless of the valley you may be in right now, you can rest in the promises of God that he has you. Amen? Amen? You know, when I was watching the basketball game, the gold medal game, and it, yesterday, and it got real tight there at the end. I said, okay, what are we going to do now? This thing's starting to get tight. And, and Chef Curry says, it's time for me to cook. That boy started cooking. And I'm like, wait a minute, what just happened? All I'm doing in my house is, oh, my goodness. He gave me the shoot again. Ah! I'm just going crazy at the house by myself. Because he was in a zone that no matter what he put up, went in. I'm telling you now, God says, I got you in the zone right now. That whatever you, whatever you put up, it's going to work in your favor. It's, it's going to work in your favor. 
Oh, y'all better hear me. Oh, just because stuff is raging around you, don't mean it has to rage. Don't you let it get inside of you. Don't you let it get inside. When Steph shot that last shot, everybody on that bench did. And I'm telling you now, if you stay with God, you'll make the devil drop his head. You'll make him drop his head. He'll get tired of messing with you and he'll move on to somebody else. Why? Because you trust the God and the God of his word. He cannot lie. And the path to getting out of any valley is surrendering to God. That's the path to getting, getting out of any, any valley is surrendering to God. Okay, I tried everything, God. This ain't working. So now I'm just going to surrender to you. If I got to stay here, I'm going to stay here. If I got to run, I'm going to run. If I got to walk, I'm going to walk. But I'm here to listen because I'm tired of being in this place. And then that's when God says, good, you do. Because it's hard to save somebody drowning when they're fighting you and you're trying to save them. And sometimes when God says, I'm trying to pull you out, but you're fighting me too much. So I can't do nothing until you give up and let me pull you out of that. So point number one was Satan's assumption. Point number two was the Savior's announcement. Point number three is the saint's accomplishment. Last point, the saint's accomplishments. Because when God gives us an assignment, we still have work to do. I say this all the time. You're going to participate in your own breakthrough. It's never all God. It's, it's going to always be y'all God. It's you and God that's going to be responsible for your victory. All throughout scripture, everybody Jesus dealt with had something to do. It was something that they had to do. It wasn't just he just did it. It was something that had to be done. He even asked Bartimaeus, as a blind man, Jesus, what do you want? Jesus said, what do you want me to do? Now, we always say he blind. <laughs> Come on, Jesus. That's what we would say. But Jesus would say, oh, no, 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 no. If you don't tell me what you want the power to do, the power doesn't work. That's why the woman with the issue of blood said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Well, she, she decreed what the power was going to do when she did it in faith. And Jesus said, somebody touched me. Power left out of me. What was going on? Faith drew power out of Jesus. Sometimes he don't need to see your face. He need to see your faith. I'm trying to get into his presence. He said, let your faith do the work for you. Ooh, that's so good right there. Verse 29, 1 Kings 20, 29. It's something that you and I have to do to experience what God said is ours. Verse 29 says, says this, and they encamped opposite one another seven days. And then on that seventh day, the battle joined or began. And the people of Israel struck down of the Syrians 100,000 foot soldiers in one day. What happened here? They believed God, went out and fought, but God did the killing. Because there's no way it said that they were few, but they killed many. What's going on? God says, if you just show up, a lot of this I'm going to do myself. Don't even worry about it. I got angels already. They, they working. You all just go to the battlefield. Oh, you better hear me right now. Y'all ain't got to worry about it. You fighting Urkel and J.J. Walker and, and people that look like that. Don't worry about the big ones. Some people don't. Oh, who can I use today? They don't know Urkel. Maybe they don't know. You fighting people that you ain't got to worry about whether you're going to win or not. They saw the enemy and put the enemy to flight because God was with them. And what the devil does not want us to know is the fact that God is in the battle with us. What he wants us to do, the devil, look at the problem. Keep looking at the problem. And God says, look squarely on the promise. Don't look at the problem. Look squarely on the promise. Because I'm able to do exceeding abundantly all that you may ask or think. God says, I'm here to do more than you can even ask or think according to the power that's working in you. You know it's hard to get power to work if you don't plug into the power. If I don't plug into Jesus and stay plugged in, no power flows. And so what the enemy says is unplug. 
Unplug and then sit there for a while and look at the stuff yourself and you try to figure out how you can get power without being plugged in. And we lose when we get there. So when you're in your valley, what's working in you? The problem or his power? Because regardless of the valley, God is able to do more than you can ask or think. In your valley, never pitch a tent in that valley. Some people get stuck right there in the valley and they just make a house right there in the valley. Never pitch a tent in the valley. Keep moving. I don't care if you're moving. Just you're barely moving. But keep moving. Don't stop. Just keep moving. The only time you're not to stop is when God says stop. Other than that, with all the strength you have, you keep moving. You keep moving. You keep trusting God because he's going to tell you what way to turn, when to stop, even when to turn back around and go another direction. Why? God knows what we need to do and how we need to do it. And so don't let your flesh cause you to, 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 to disobey God. You stay with what God is telling you to do. So, Pastor, why am I not saying victory like this then? Why, why, why am I not saying that? Because people are waiting on a feeling instead of claiming what God has already given them by faith. When, it, when I feel right, I have to go do it. When I feel better, I go do it. It has nothing to do with how you feel. It has everything to do with how you trust and, and your faith in God. Because, listen, I'm going to work feeling like I didn't want to be there. Uh, come on, students, you've gone to class feeling like I don't want to be there. Some of you students went to class with your name only. Huh? Yeah, you told your friend, sign me in. Yeah. Yeah. They start laughing when they understood what I just said. <laughs> I know I did it a couple of times. Yeah, so I got to get to this place where, no, I need to be where God is telling me to be at. All that scripture, there were many great people in the Bible that they claimed victory in spite of what was against them. Many. Joshua and Caleb was only two of the 12 leaders that went into the promised land. Who saw giants and said they will launch for us? The other ten said, we, we can't beat them. Joshua and Caleb say, God is with us. Their defenses is down, and they are launch for us. Look like they were in the valley, because how are we going to win against them? David shows up to a battlefield. Uh, the soldiers of, of Israel were shaking in their boots, been fighting all their life, but they were scared. David shows up at the tending sheep and says, hey, how, how, how long y'all going to let him do this? He's talking bad about our God and ain't nobody going to do nothing. David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? His brothers came and got mad at David and said, you here, man, go, go back home and tend to the sheep. They said, no, 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 no. Somebody needed to do something. They told Saul, then they took him to Saul. They said, let no man's heart fear because of this giant. I, I'll go kill him. Saul said, David, you, you just, you're youth. He's been fighting since his youth. David said, but you don't know my background. I got a testimony. I kept my father's sheep and a lion in the back came and I, I killed him. And he told the king, he said, and Goliath, as big as he is, he's going to be like that. Runs to the battlefield, Goliath, as big as he is, he said, oh, they sent a boy out here? I'm going to cut your head off. David said, this day will the Lord deliver you into my hands. I'm going to cut your head off and feed your flesh to the birds of the air. And the Bible says, and David charged him. What was going on? David was in a tough situation. But what did he do? I have a testimony. So I remember what God has done. See, a lot of us, we have testimonies, but in valleys, we forget our testimonies. In tough times, we forget how God has delivered. And I tell you all the time, you need a faith notebook. You need to write down every time God does something for you so that when you go through a tough time, open your book up and just rejoice. See, I can have joy all over again. I can rejoice because I saw him do it before. And because he did it, I know he'll do it again. And so instead of looking at where I am, God, you know what? You showed up here. You showed up there. 
when I was in my, I thought it was over for me and you showed up. And not only did you show up, you showed up and you showed out and delivered me. Ah, in the face of give up opportunities, God showed up. Throughout the Bible, we see this happening when people are in these down moments. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we're not going to bow down. When the sound goes off the worship of that God, they said, we're not doing that. We're not doing it. King comes to them and says, hey, if you don't do it, we're going we're going to fire and say, listen, even if our God don't show up, we know he's able. That's some boldness there. You're getting ready to go in the fire. And your statement to the person who can kill you is that if God don't deliver us, we know he's able. Valley moments full of faith. The Bible says, and, and the fire was turned up seven times harder and they threw them in. And the king looked in and said, wait a minute. Was there not three? I see four. And one looks like the son of man. What was going on? In that valley moment, God stepped in and saved them. So if we can get to this place in God, then in our valley moments, know that I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know why, but I know God is going to step in. Then it changed my prayer time. It changes my song that I have inside of me. Let me tell you the secret to your valley. It's knowing that on the mountaintop or the valley, God is in there with you. You better hit me. That's the secret now. That for a mountaintop or valley, he is Lord of both of them. He is over both. Yeah, I'm in this valley, but the God that I serve is here with me. Yeah, I got to fight this fight, but the God that I serve is with me in this fight. Yeah, I feel alone. I feel by myself, but you better believe God is with you. You're never alone. I don't know when I'm coming out, but you better believe this. You coming out if you stay with God. And that's the mindset you got to have. That I don't care. I'm coming out of this thing right here. No, I've seen him do it. That's why I'm a big believer in that when you have a true experience with God, can no argument outweigh an experience. They can argue out there all they want to argue about who, who we serve. We got this, uh, this, this colonizing God that we serve, this white God that we serve. Let, let them talk all they want to talk. When you know the God that we serve is not a God of a color, but the God of creation that made everything. And he says, I can call him daddy. And he calls me son. Whoa, well, I got to be there and give God everything. Because when you see God do it, everything changes. And that's why the fight has been raging against a lot of you all. Because he don't want you to have no experience of God delivering you anyway, anyhow. Because when you do, everything changes. Because when you see him and you hear his voice and you really know that's him, oh my God. This day is different for you. Some of y'all may be in a valley right now, but just know God is in the valley with you right now. And then if you stay connected with him, that same God is going to bring you right on through the valley. And when you get back up your mountaintop, as a matter of fact, going up, just begin to praise him. Don't worry about waiting until you get there. Going up. You go right on in and just praise God. Amen? Come on, give God praise in the house. Woo. Come on, give him praise in the house. Come on, give him more praise in the house.